Hi, everybody. I'm Doug Chalmers. Uh, I joined SEI US in Davis about a year ago, and I'm here to tell you about my experiences so far, which have revolved around restoring in stream flows in California, recorded here from my home in California. So, California is a state uh, with a big reputation, famous for beaches, movie stars, fabulous cities, tech industry as well as some of the most productive farmland in the world. So what's the problem? The problem is that the farmland really looks like this, and a lot of the water has to come from the Sierra Nevada mountains, where snowmelt feeds into reservoirs, which then need to be transported sometimes hundreds of miles to the cities and the farms through a network of aqueducts and pipelines. And with the most variable rainfall in the United States, uh, these reservoirs don't always fill up every year. And we could be seeing more empty reservoirs in the future due to reduced snowpack from climate change impacts. And California really was settled on a history of water scarcity. Uh, early American settlers in the gold rush era had to claim water rights for mining and agriculture. And back in this Wild West era, a lot of the settlers were really able to claim as much water as they could use. And the state has difficulties this day because these early water rights are exempt from a lot of state regulations still. As California continued to develop, more than a thousand dams were built to supply the growing cities and agriculture. Until about 1980, when we see that the uh, reservoir storage in blue remains flat while the population in green continues to grow because most of the reservoir projects ha had already been built out. What's more is that it was often overestimated how much water these reservoir projects could really provide, meaning that more water rights were handed out than could be fulfilled. And so today we see a problem with overallocation where there's water rights on many streams for more water than actually flows through it. And this creates a lot of pressure for fish and aquatic habitat, as many of the streams are sucked dry to fulfill these water rights. And this creates uh, problems for the fish as the number of extinct species has been increasing and healthy species have been dropping. So this is where a lot of my work comes in is helping to leave more flow in the streams to help protect the fish habitat. And one tool that water managers have to leave more flow in the streams is to develop uh, minimum in-stream flow requirements. And these are requirements to leave a certain amount of flow in the stream to protect the fish habitat. And we're doing this with the state of California with the California Water Action Plan to actually develop these flow requirements. And to do that, we're using the model WEEP, which SEI has developed to quantify water rights, unpermitted cannabis, which is common in this region of California. And then we're testing different in-stream flow requirements, which the state is then using to set what they actually will be in real life, with the goal to balance fish habitat with water rights. Another tool, that water managers have to help leave more water in the streams for fish habitat is reservoir reoperation, And we're doing this with uh, the Valley Water Utility to help develop reoperation schemes so that the reservoirs can leave better habitat for the fish downstream. To do this, we've developed a WEEP plugin that can use stream flow parameters to quantify fish habitat suitability which we can then use to quantify the effects of different reservoir operation schemes on fish habitat. And right now, a lot of the changes to the reservoir operations involve operating the streams like a more natural system. And this involves higher winter flows when fish passage and reproduction are important, as well as large pulse flows that simulate natural storms that further help with fish passage. So, that's what I've got. Thanks for listening. I'll take your questions.